Our North Star, Polaris, which has been directing passengers for a long time, is about to burst. The Royal Astronomical Society, a well-known research institution in the United Kingdom, filed a research report on September 6, 2023. The paper suggested that our pole star, Polaris, is about to explode. Actually, our pole star is a Cepheid star, which implies that it releases radiation at regular intervals. However, the time required to emit Cepheid star radiation is extremely predictable, therefore the graph looks like this. What's strange is that when astronomers observed the same phenomenon in the instance of Polaris, their graph looked like this, highly unpredictable. That is, it emits radiation in an irregular pattern. When exactly does this occur? Do you have any idea? When NASA saw a similar phenomena in the instance of Betelgeuse, they determined that the star could burst at any time. In any case, NASA has yet to issue a statement on the subject, but given the identical pattern, is it feasible that our Polaris is likewise nearing the end of its life? Friends, if there is even a smidgen of truth in this, we will soon find ourselves in a scenario where all of our scientific advances, from astronomy to astrology to simple navigation, will be undermined. And this is due to two very crucial factors. To begin, if you look at a time lapse of our northern sky, you will notice that Polaris is the lone star whose position has no effect on the rotation of the world. This is why astronomers use Polaris to calibrate all of their terrestrial telescopes. Second, Polaris is the closest star to the Earth, which astronomers use to calculate the distances between other objects in the cosmos. Overall, these two things serve as a reference point. The first is to calibrate our instruments, and the second is to determine the distance between planets, stars, and galaxies acquired by those telescopes. That is, as I previously stated, if Polaris does not exist, all of our ground-based telescopes will be rendered useless. To be honest, this is why astronomers have begun to investigate the significance of Polaris's peculiar radiation pattern. You won't believe what they discovered. They determined that Polaris's behavior is being influenced by another star. So, scientists have known since 1911 that Polaris is a Cepheid variable, which means it dims and then brightens. That is why scientists have been documenting its dim bright period for many years. However, they recently not notice that the characteristics of Polaris dim and bright become unpredictable. That is why, when they re-examined it, they discovered that Polaris is a three-star system. Yes, you read that correctly. And the star we call Polaris is actually a mixture of Polaris A and Polaris B, which we perceive from afar as a single star. Isn't it fascinating? The third star in this triple star system, Polaris B, is named after the constellation of Polaris, which makes a large round around the combination of Polaris A and Polaris B every 30 years. As I previously stated, our pole star is a Cepheid variable star, which astronomers say dims and brightens every four days, indicating that it pulsates. To better comprehend its current stage behavior, astronomers placed its pulsation period data on a graph from the 1850s to the present. As a result, in 1850, its pulsation period was slightly shorter than 3.96 days. However, by the 1950s, it had dropped to 3.97 days. That is, beginning in the 1850s, its pulsation period increased slightly in comparison to the previous year. After some calculations, astronomers discovered that the pole star's pulsation period is rising by 4.5 seconds every year. But the question now is, what could be the cause of this? When astronomers examined this graph more attentively, they discovered that the change in their graph is primarily fluctuating slightly every 29.4 years, or nearly 30 years. Remember how I said Polaris B completes a cycle every 30 years and passes past A and B? B 
Because of this, scientists came to the obvious conclusion that when Polaris B passes close to the pole star, its gravity may alter the atmosphere of the pole star. And, potentially as a result of this influence, the pulsation period of the pole star is rising year after year. Isn't it fascinating? What is the point? Is the mystery solved? As you can see from the graph, this pattern was only followed correctly until 1960. Following that, there was a rapid drop in its pulsation period, followed by a return to its usual rhythm for the next 30 years. Then, when it should have continued to rise for the next 30 years, it abruptly began to fall. And even scientists knew that, whether it happens or not, the strange phenomena that happen with the pulsing of our Polaris B are not the hand of Polaris B, but of something else. Because of this odd behavior, scientists speculated that the pole star was nearing the end of its existence. Consider the case of Betelgeuse. According to NASA, its brightness is also oscillating in the same fashion as if a warning for it to burst had been issued. That's why, when scientists looked into the potential of our pole star exploding in this direction, you won't believe what they discovered. They discovered that it is entirely possible that our pole star will similarly burst. They discovered that when Polaris-like Cephide stars reach the end of their lives, they experience the same phenomenon as regular stars like Betelgeuse. In fact, when a star is born, its temperature and brightness are modest. That is why, if we plot brightness versus temperature, we will see baby stars. Now, when a newborn star becomes older, it produces energy through nuclear fusion, which raises its warmth and brightness. So in the main sequence phase, it goes from here to here on this graph. Normally, a star will remain in this phase for billions of years. Then, at some time in the star's life, all of the hydrogen present in it is depleted. After then, it begins to expand quite quickly. As a result, its brilliance abruptly increases, and it is currently in a red giant phase. This star will now remain in this phase for approximately a billion years. After that, it explodes, causing its outer layer to fly away, leaving only a dense core known as a white dwarf behind. Because this white dwarf is dense, its temperature has risen above that of the original star. However, because its size has shrunk, it no longer appears to be as dazzling. This is the life cycle of a typical star, such as the sun. There is, however, a catch. Because of the red giant phase known as the Safid variable phase, even stars as massive as the sun can go through an incredibly violent period before becoming a white dwarf. At this point, we can claim that the stars are sending us SOS, or distress signals, in the form of light flashes, that they will perish very soon. Astronomers believe that our Polaris is doing the same. Actually, many times during the red giant phase, when a star's mass is two or three times that of the sun, the temperature of that star abruptly rises in an unstable manner due to its mass and hence the compression created by gravity. This is followed by a succession of powerful light flashes. This is because, as you can see, every star is engaged in a tug of war, where mass and gravity drive things inward and the nuclear processes that begin are pushing things outward due to their compression. In such instances, what happens in stars like Polaris is that when hydrogen nearly fully converts to helium, its surface helium absorbs a lot of heat and light energy and throws both of its electrons out due to excessive temperature and produces helium 2 plus ions. Do you understand what this absorption means now? A star loaded with helium 2 plus ions will appear somewhat dull when viewed from the outside. However, this is only one way of looking at the issue. We can also perceive the dimness from a different angle. Tell me if the energy of a dim item is less or more than the energy of a dazzling one. Clearly, less. So, in stars like Polaris, this is what happens. Actually, 
When helium-2 plus ions absorb a large amount of energy, they begin to move rapidly. As a result, the force pushing out their gases in such stars becomes stronger than the gravity pulling them in. As a result, such stars begin to grow in size. But expansion merely implies that the compression and increasing temperature, as well as the conversion to helium-2+, will cease. And this is precisely what occurs in cepheid stars. When the stars cool down, those helium-2 plus ions that had given up both of their electrons in return for energy now give up their extra energy in the form of light and begin accepting their one electron back. In exchange, helium ions are produced. As a result of this emitted light, the star begins to shine brightly once more. I know what you're thinking. How does this prove Polaris will die? So, if you are a true scientific analyst who is also interested in studying things in detail, you must have noticed one thing. Did you know that He2 plus is generated by absorbing helium energy? When energy is released, however, He2 plus generates simply He plus, not a stable helium atom. To sustain nuclear fusion events beyond a given time, a star's stable helium atoms will be fully depleted and gravity will suddenly collapse that star into its core. That means the sepide star will explode instantaneously, leaving only its core remains. Again, astronomers refer to this as the white dwarf. Now comes the crucial question. Is our Polaris's pulsing showing an erratic pattern because its stable helium is virtually depleted and it will burst very soon? According to scientists, Cepheid variable stars often pulsate in a consistent manner. That is, even as they fluctuate between dimness and brightness, their time of fluctuation rises in a consistent pattern. It is unheard of for a Cepheid star's pulsation period to rise, then decrease, then climb again after a few years. So, without a doubt, what is happening with Polaris is a one-of-a-kind circumstance that even astronomers have yet to fully comprehend. So guys, whatever we've learned about Polaris thus far, two things are clear. One is that Polaris is a Cepheid variable star that fluctuates. The second is that it has a third star in its star system, Polaris B, which pierces it with its gravity every 30 years. As a result, Polaris has the potential to burst. That is why it has an uneven pulsing period. It is also possible that the reason for this unequal pulsation time is a combination of the periodic events of both stars, resulting in such an uneven pulsation pattern. Because you know what? The combination of periodic things will always remain periodic. It isn't required to change that. Take, for example, the Earth's Ice Age. As we know, the ice ages are caused by three periodic motions of the Earth, the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit, its wobble, and its tilt. Despite this, if you look at the Earth's history, all the ice ages that have occurred, there is no gap of a consistent pattern or definite years. And just because the time span of the three Earth motions is so varied, what I mean is that something similar may be happening with Polaris as well. Polaris is shifting in an unusual and unpredictable way due to two periodic motions. So, until this second possibility is eliminated, we cannot infer that Polaris will explode. And it doesn't matter, even if it means there's still a chance. Officially, there appears to be little cause for concern. Perhaps this is why NASA is more concerned about the usage of Beetle than our own Polaris, which, according to them, is 100% certain to detonate very soon. And if you learned something new or fulfilled your curiosity from this video, please leave a like. In addition, subscribe to the Space Beat News channel. And don't forget to click the bell button so you don't miss out on such informative videos in the future. See you again soon. Stay curious, keep learning, and keep growing until then.